was a lot of candy and uh and delicious too beautiful art tasty nicely done lots of different kinds we what did we draw almond joys but there seemed to be different kinds of candies from all over the world candies that people had emotional relationships with clearly we drew so, almond joys but we ate kit kats <laughs> that's true we did um speaking of candy what do you want to show, share that candy uh sure yeah so, anyway um, so uh, we got candy in the mail yeah hold it back it's it's out of focus there you go Yes, so that's and rice candy that we got in the mail. Literally, Twiglet is obsessed. completely obsessed with, obsessed with it. So, anyway, I'm Danny Gregory. Uh, that was JJ and Twiglet. This is Draw With Me. It's Thursday. And for those of you who are kind of joining us newly, newly, freshly, <laughs> as opposed to the stale old ones of us who have been around forever. Testing those, the waters. Those new people out there. Um, what we do in Draw With Me is we get together and we draw a thing. But you can draw whatever you want, honestly. You, you could not draw at all. You could just sit around and eat candy. Do whatever you want. But the idea is to have at least one time a week where you get together and just draw for the fun of it. That's really the idea is we're trying to hearken back to the good old days when you were six and you were sitting on the living room floor or at the kitchen table while your mom's cooking dinner or your dad was whatever butchering a fish um, whatever was going on and you were sitting there with your markers and your crayons and maybe your coloring books or just some paper and you were just drawing and having fun that's the whole idea we may or may not make something oh my god look it's like all kinds of horrible spam. I, know. I just del- I just reported him to YouTube. Yes, I'm assuming uh, it's a him. <clears throat> anyway, so um, yeah, so that kind of thing didn't go on in those days, but um, <laughs> so, but we had fun, innocent, spam-free fun, <laughs> just drawing and uh, you know doing cool stuff. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to do today. Last week we drew candy, but today is, of course, you know what the big day is today. Dun, da, da, da. Do you know? Typewriters. It's National Typewriter Day. It's not just typewriters. It is a national holiday, National Typewriter Day. So that's. I, what I wonder. I wonder uh, how many people in this thread use once used a typewriter. Well, we're going to talk about that. I mean, I know we both did. I think typewriters are just. They are. They're a part of. I mean, if you were over, what do you think? Thirty-five, forty. I, I I first remember transitioning to a computer kind of like the sen- senior year in college. I feel like I got a computer my freshman year in college, but before that I used it. Yeah, my life. senior year in, in college, they you could go to the computer Or a word center. processor. Yeah, you could remember go, those? It yeah. wasn't a real computer. We didn't really it was like even a word have processor. those. Compu- you'd go to the computer center and you could like write there. And I was just seem like too much trouble but but we're going to talk about our typewriters oh yeah somebody's pointing out tom hanks still uses that's one. right tom he hanks. wrote that great book tom hanks has become you know some people say danny no they don't looks like tom hanks never heard it <laughs> but um the young tom hanks perhaps yes i so, i tend so, to agree excuse me i'm going to talk about the gray book today's today's sketchbook of the day is the gray book by hanamula it is gray paper Beautiful gray paper, by the way, um, that is really nice to draw on. And we and if you'd like to find out what that means, you could get a gray book from Hanamula from us for free as a present because you're super nice and you deserve one. So you just have to write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com. Write to us, send us your mailing address, tell us, tell us why you want, why should you get a gray, gray book? Why would you like one? And then we'll randomly pick from among the most outstanding entries. We have two to give away. And we'll give away two of them. Two. And um, two. only in the United States, unfortunately. We're sponsored by Hanamula USA. So for now, we can only give away free ones, too. But you're f- welcome to buy a, a gray book anywhere in the world that you are. You can buy one. Unfortunately, we can only give away free ones to Americans. Well, not Americans, people who have a United States dates mailing address um if you prefer to write to us why not here's our post office box four five three six five that's four five three six five 
operators are standing by to open the mail and look at it. Yeah. What kind of mail have we gotten? Well, as I pointed out, <laughs> Twiggy's obsessed with Barbara sent us some candy uh, after I noted last week on her drawing. I, I was not familiar with this candy. She has significantly upped her odds. Um, but you know what? We have we got some zines this week. We got. I mean, we love seeing zines. We love all mail, and honestly, it's just like massively char charming to get. We got a zine, Red Harp. We got Holly Rose's wonderful zine, her June at the Rose Ranch. If you're not on her list, get on it. Um, we got a nice long letter. Uh, we got cool looking things in packages that have monkeys that uh, we're saving for later today. Um, cards, sketches, you know, it's like, it's, it's nice. It's, it's just nice to get mail, I right? I mean, inter interspersed in the mail, we get like notices from, you know, the IRS and things like that. So it's really, it kind of helps my blood pressure even out. Um, yes. No, we're not scofflaws. But the IRS isn't sending us notices. We're a business, of but course. They just, the IRS, the IRS occasionally yeah. likes to reach out from time to time. They're lonely. They're sitting there. They're lonely. <laughs> they're hated. You know, we're, we're happy to make them feel better. Yeah, we, we've, we've <laughs> recently been getting a lot of tax notices from New York City, where we stopped operating in 2020. And they, right. yeah, That's they TMI. Want, they want uh, everything. But anyway, it does. It rises my blood, raises my blood pressure, and then I get. Uh, I just ignore it. I, I get frogs. I get frogs, and I, they make me happy. So people are talking about typing, talking about learning typing in high school. You know, did you take typing lessons in high school? I sure did, but and it was a nun. A nun taught me typing. So it's because how do you think that went? Yeah, she was she was uh, not very forgiving about my, uh, you know insistence to go faster that was a, a cause for criticism um well, you you were a young you. lady and you wanted to guarantee yourself employment <laughs> so learning typing skills was probably what the, what was the agenda because for me i never took typing lessons i i just learned to type kind of by doing it and you, I'm still i mean pretty learned, terrible yeah i was gonna say learned in like I, quotations just, i've been typing basically for a living for my entire life since i was probably seven or eight and i'm still terrible at it yeah, it's, it. honestly, he's not exaggerating. The worst. <sighs> so people, uh, Virginia's son collected old typewriters, and he named his used bookstore Flying Oliver. Old typewriters are heavy. Right. So if you have moved, like, ever in your life, it's sort of like the first thing that you deem not move-worthy. <clears throat> um, so, yes. So so we've got, okay, so everybody has, has typewriter memories, and that's nice because that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, we have a lot of typewriters that um, I pulled some reference pictures. And if you want to get the pictures yourself, because I'm going to just draw one of them, but if you want to get if you want to get the whole collection, they're here on our blog page on YouTube. I don't know if you knew that, but we have a little blog on YouTube. It's kind of under your community tab, but you can get to it directly by going to school.tiny.us slash typewriter. And that will take you directly there. So here's a bunch of different cool ones. And I, 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 there's, it's interesting to look at the designs of them. You know, I think there's, it's interesting, in fact, because there's much more variety than there is in laptops. I agree. Right? I mean, look at how beautiful some of them are, the different personalities. Here's, this is the one that, oh, man. When I was a kid, the Selectric, the IBM Selectric. I mean, it was advanced technology. So the IBM Selectric was obviously like that was a, uh, an office typewriter. Um, and I remember my second stepfather bought himself one. And it was like, I think it was like $800, which in those days, that was like most people didn't earn $800 in their entire lifetimes back in those days. <laughs> you know, $800, I mean... No, it was that like was, it was, was a was real luxury money. item. Yeah, it was like money that he stole, probably. But um, anyway, so we had this, and if you remember this electric, it had what were called golf balls, and the type, the fonts, you could change the font. I mean, that was radical. That you could have, and and I remember there was one particular font that was called Orator, and it was really big letters, and I think it was it was designed for like. I don't know what it was designed for, for like public speaking, probably. Public <laughs> for speaking. when you're shouting? Shouting, exactly, which <laughs> my stepfather did a lot. So, yeah, so there's Orator, but then you could get Pika and Elite and all these different ones, and it was, wow. I mean, and this typewriter was huge and steel. Yeah, it was beefy. Oh, my God. It was, and 
the most amazing feature of all, on the lower right-hand part of the keyboard, you could backspace and delete. That was the big thing, right? You didn't have to have whiteout. You didn't have to have, remember that? You still had to have whiteout. The select track? Yeah, because it was like, I mean, you didn't realize you de didn't delete it right away. I mean, whiteout was a major component right, of but typewriting. You're, but you're raining on IBM's I'm parade. Sorry, it was I'm an sorry. enormous innovation. It was. And you remember those, they used to have those typewriter erasers. It was like a, a circular eraser with a brush it attached totally to it. totally didn't work. And it was always Hard. dried out. And like it always was, ripped up the paper. Yeah. It was terrible. It was like it was like a piece of stone or something. And then there was whiteout, which whose mother invented that? Mike Nesmith of the Beatles, of the Monkees. Don't even the talk monkeys. about the Beatles. The Monkees, Mike Nesmith of the Monkees, his mother invented liquid paper. She was, I think she was like a secretary. And she came up with this idea and then made it into a company. So. She was a genius. She probably didn't really get credit for it either. She did get credit for it. In fact, I'm, I'm continuing to broadcast that fact. That's a good point. Well, I hope she later. got rich. I hope she got I rich. I think she did. That's why Mike Nesmith was able to be in the Monkees. Because he wasn't that good. Yes. Um, do we have any audio of a typewriter? Um, possibly. Now, what about that typewriter? You can put on the headphones if you want to hear what exactly it sounds like. So that's that typewriter. And now, here's another typewriter. What's the difference? Electricity. Exactly. So this is a manual typewriter. And that is an electric typewriter. Really different. So, so I don't know. Um, I remember having a manual typewriter, but also when I went to college, this is what I got. And this was the bomb too. So this is an Olivetti Lexicon 82. It's in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art. It had, a, it was like a, a prosumer version of an, a Selectric. And um, it didn't have the, the delete thing, but it did, you could change the typeface. And it, it was just beautiful. And it was not a very good typewriter, despite all that. <laughs> As is so often the case with beautifully designed Form things. Form over function. It's like, yeah, it looks really cool. It's foxy, as you would like to say. A word Danny likes it's to use. Foxy. It's foxy. Yeah, it's nicey. And you could pop out. You see those two little thumb holes? You could pop out the whole cartridge. Because that's another thing about typewriters was changing the ribbon was a nightmare most of the time. The IBM Selectric, though, had those. It had a, do you remember it had like a plastic ribbon? so that each type you could only use it once. Whereas I remember having a manual typewriter and rewinding the ribbon to reuse it. And then it would get fainter and fainter. So there's all kinds of- Oh my of gosh, delete Tinder is back. Oh my God, really? Okay, well, this person clearly- Guys, I'm reporting Sorry, don't, guys. so you don't have to. Um, anyway, so that's the Olivetti Lexicon. But all right, let's get into drawing. So okay, I'm going to try to put. But, but this here, I did down. want to talk about this, which is I'll get rid of JJ. Um, so um, this I've been working in this thing here. This is this is what I did yesterday. So this is gouache. This is sort of a uh, you know, it's more bold strokes as it were. Cute. You Love. Like I'm loving this color palette. Yeah. So this is this new set of gouache I got. I don't know what I should talk about. Should I talk about it now? I got this new set of, um, I think they're like Chinese I mean, gouache. They're kind of already made cheap this and a little incredibly nasty. cute package they're dirty. Cheap and, they're cheap and a little nasty. They are look, not is, nasty. They, they are came, the cute. They came in this. Yeah. Let me just, uh, they came in here. It's called Himi, and it was. But, I mean, you cannot, the package is this like delightful pink. I mean, these things are juicy as hell. Can you see that? You can see how juicy they are, right? And I think it was like 20. Six bucks for this thing. It weighs about 200 pounds. It's very heavy. It's right. beefy. But so, look yeah. at that! Oh, yeah. I die. Yeah, so it's, it's, and it comes in this cute, you can buy pink or I think you can buy teal. It's packaging. So, anyway. It's not, not They're not a, a sponsor. Yeah, I just, I happen to just have bought them. Um, and they're not the quality of a really good gouache. They really aren't. I mean, I've had to layer and layer to get them to be as opaque as I would. And this is kind of how they left me feeling. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that one. But then also, this is this is my second or third sketchbook I ever had. So this is a really old one. And I hand-bound it. 
and I made this little, this is a, a seal that I had made. And it's uh, iridescent. I can't really see it. So this is 1998. Oh, it's volume six. Okay, volume six. Some of these drawings are actually in, uh, in my second book, Everyday Matters. But here, so this is an Underwood Noiseless 77, and I bought it at a flea market, I think. And, and over the years, I've bought myself numerous manual typewriters, having fantasies about using them, bringing them home, and then realizing, oh, God, I hate typewriters. Into the closet it goes. Horrible. They're really, they're just everything about it. And the worst part of it is they're exhausting to type on, and you can't delete, and you can't move copy around, type around. So I just love them, and I love, you know, I love that, but no, not, not happening. That audio track is very low. That's because you're not listening to the feed. Oh, right. Feed. Sorry, long moment. All right, let's get on with it, shall we? Please. Let's draw so, something. So I like this Smith Corona. I think this thing is just, it's just cute. I like, I like how bulbous it is. This is your kind of a shape. What do you think? Uh, okay, well, she doesn't like it. I don't really care. That's what I'm planning to draw. You're free to draw any of the other ones if you want. But I'm going to be working uh, here oh, in look, the gray book. Look, it's the hoodless Luca Pacioli. Yes, we're not talking about that. <laughs> Today is, national, is not National Accounting Day. It's National Typewriter Day. So let's get going on this and uh, get into National Typewriter Day. Smith Corona. Oh, oh no. All right, I'm going to get rid of you, JJ. I'm sorry, Twiglet's like chewing up your sketchbook. You threw on the ground. Um, I think I'm going to just start here with this rod. What's it called? The, this thing, the carriage return. That would be a cool thing to have on a word processor or on a, on a laptop. Big carriage return thing. They could... And also, you got to think. So the thing about a typewriter is, it's a really nice, complicated piece of machinery, you know, which is a really fun thing to draw. Complicated machines are fun, but I'm already drawing it, so I'm already screwing up because it's not fitting on the page properly. I can tell. Okay, so maybe I'll just draw a detail of it. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just drawing a detail. Good excuse, but I think I already screwed it up, so it isn't fitting on the page. So. That's the way it goes sometimes. And yeah, so it's it's nice and complicated. So you might want to think like, how do you want to approach this? Do you want to do like that that drawing that I just showed you that I did of the old Noiseless 77? That was like, you know, really drawing every key, every letter, you know, really trying to draw the details of it. It just feels like that might be the road that I'm going down now. Alternatively, you could do something like I showed you with that gouache thing, which is just being more kind of stylized, generalized, graph graphic. Um, all of these little, there's they're so many, it's a very complicated mechanical object, the type, manual typewriter. And, um, you know, I was reading something about typewriter day and apparently the very first kind of ancestor of the typewriter was from the 16th century if you can imagine that so it's really uh, a complicated machine that i think didn't kind of really hit its stride until probably the um, 19th century but it was certainly something that was a very complex technology that took a long time to kind of work out all the best ways of uh, designing all these complicated moving parts so that it didn't jam and all these other things that can happen with the typewriter. And that's another thing I'm sure you remember. These keys jamming. Not in, not in a good way. But it's a sort of an interesting thing if you think about it as, as, a, as a printing device because ultimately what this is is it's it is a letterpress printer, really. And it's just individual pieces of type 
being slammed against uh, an ink an ink source, which is the of course the the ribbon, and then it has. Does it have? I start to say that sentence. I don't even remember what I was saying. It is sometimes difficult to draw and talk at the same time. I don't know that it uses the same parts of my brain, but um, it's easy to get lost in thought while doing this. I mean, people often comment that they're amazed that you can draw and talk at the same time. Well, uh -oh. You know what I'm also doing? Uh -oh. is I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm also patting my head and rubbing my tummy. Um, you'll be glad to know that the leaf blowers have just shown up. So this is that's why good. I hold Twiglet when Jimmy draw with me so she doesn't get too zesty. Um, and then, all right, so that's, that's recognizably the business end of a typewriter. Now we get into the keys, which, again, this is a decision. Where do we want to go with the keys? Do we want to draw every one of them? And do we want to make sure that we letter them all correctly? Or do we want to just sort of draw a bunch of random circles? Um, you know, this is, it is interesting that this technology that has been around for so long continues to live on really in the design of computers. And the, particularly the QWERTY keyboard, which um, was supposedly designed to actually slow down typists so that they didn't jam the keys, because rather than making the technology better, they made the <laughs> performance worse. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, that obviously is irrelevant now, and yet that this design of QWERTY is something we're still so used to for six. So I'm kind of, I'm cheating a bit because I'm not really I looking. I was going to say, I can't hit improv that area. Well, certainly not. I'm actually feeling like I'm just doing it too quickly because I'm not looking at each individual key and the angle that it is. But I certainly want to make sure that I have the right number of keys. And then there's some interesting little knobs and twiddly bits on this thing that you don't, like, I, I seem to remember, like, what is the CL and clear and set? What does that mean? It, could that be a, a setting the margins, maybe? I've also seen on some manual typewriters, they'll have um, hard and soft, key, I guess, for the, how hard is the keyboard? How hard is the, it's like a like the sports setting. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's kind of a relaxing no. thing to draw oh. because because these things are kind of different one from the other, but they're also pretty specific. And, and so, you know, again, do we want to be like really careful about drawing these or not? I think we want to just suggest that they're keys on a keyboard. So you don't necessarily have to get the angles of each one right. But again, you could if that's what you're into. Your twiglet snoring? No, she, it's, she's like grumbling because she hears oh, she activities. Hears, she hears. And we're about to hear activities. She hears lawn care. Namely, lawn care leaf, leaf preparation. For those of you who are new to draw with me, we hire um, a lawn care crew to come <laughs> during the show to give us some background and just to keep things interesting, you know, to connect us with nature. So, yeah. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You probably we, will. We rent this house, and the landlord controls the lawn care yeah. operations, and despite our pleas, our yeah. outright begging. I think it's like they now get a kick out of the fact that it disturbs us. This is the house that we were kind of forced to rent at the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, now it's our home. So yeah, so now I'm th this, it's interesting, the space bar is actually built into the structure of, of this typewriter. 
So amazingly, this typewriter ended up kind of fitting on the page, sort of. Yeah, I sort of thought you were going to be in trouble, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> I am in trouble because because I think I'm not going to be able to do this like little knob thing here. Yeah. There's also all these like sliding sliders. This it's a really pretty sophisticated machine, and um, you know, again, that's what happens when you have technology that's been perfected over a century, probably. And that's why there's National Typewriter Day. Well deserved, I think. What about National Lawnmower Day? Could be coming up. Mm. We know who would be interested in celebrating that. Our friends, the lawnsmen, lawnsmiths. So I'm sort of very crudely adding in the branding. I don't know if I ever told you this, JJ, but I... The house that we lived in when I was in my in high school was owned by the heir to the Underwood typewriter fortune. Oh, well, yes. Seems like maybe you should, could have picked that. Yeah, I'm not sure that they deserve it. But anyway, <laughs> so here we have this, and now I'm going to take advantage. I think of the fact that. Uh, you know, this is the grave book. And, you know, I want to make these keys stand out a bit. And the, this grave book is really, what I like about this paper so much is it's really great for a lot of forms of ink. It's beautiful for, for writing with a fountain pen or for drawing with fine liners like this. It is, um, it's, just, it's just nice. I mean, nice what is this pen you're using? This is a, a brush pen. So it is India ink, essentially. And, you know, but it's it, the fibers of this paper are really tight. And uh, that means that you, your line doesn't bleed. Your line is just crisp. Crisp as a fresh ribbon in a well-oiled typewriter. When I was growing up, the typewriter we had had lived on a like very cute little metal rolling stand. Yes, remember that, and it had and like it had, a, a, little, a leaf that folded yep. up and down. I used to have one too. Yeah, it was cute, and uh, it also had like you could kind of lift it so that then the wheels came down, and then you could roll it. I don't remember that. Ours yeah. might that feature might have been broken, but well, that's because it was like. Typewriters are so heavy. Yeah, and you would like to roll it into the, like this corner of the room, and then you would right. ro roll it on out when you needed to work on your book report. Could you imagine having your laptop on a thing like that? Could be kind of how handy. Why not, right? Someone's commenting this is an intimidating subject. Really? It's... If you're intimidated by this subject. <laughs> Someone else pointed out that you put in five rows of keys. <laughs> yeah, I did. This is, an, this is a personally adapted one uh, because, you know, it's, honestly, this is your fault. You people Oh, Danny. Me. You just people distract. You stale people. All right. So here I'm using a white pencil. Let's see if this is a good white pencil. It's pretty good. This is pretty good. Let me see if I have a better one. Oh, cute. I like that. You like the white? Yeah, I do. I like this whole combo. Yeah, I mean, the gray, it's just, it's just an opportunity to use white, which we don't really get that often. Maybe this top row is the function keys, you know, like on a, on a computer keyboard. Because my computer keyboard has one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Rows of keys, actually. I hope that you're... Yes, you didn't have to really adjust the volume on your typewriter. What do you mean? There's no key to, you know, there's a oh, row yeah, of keys on true. a computer. And there's no command key, control key, option key. Uh, the shift lock key was there. Do you remember that? It was literally like you would shift 
you would shift to the to the top part of the key because each each key in the keyboard in the typewriter had lowercase in the top, I think, and then the uppercase in the bottom. So when you would shift it, you would literally shift it up to the top of the key, and then you would um, you like would an lock organ. it in it's place. It's like an organ. Oh, should we talk about that? Yeah, we went to see this to this concert. We're All back right. to see concerts yeah. again. What, just before in case. everyone comments, we we are aware of what happened the last time we went to the concert. But last time we went to the concert, we got hoping COVID. Hoping we're immune. We got COVID. But now we've gotten COVID, so we can go to the concert <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, we of, figured now is the time. It all worked out great. And uh, we went to this concert. At the Musical Instrument Museum here in Phoenix, which if you ever come here. If you ever come, come to here, Phoenix, you got to go see it's it. It's a very, very cool place. I think right. really unlike any other museum I've been to anywhere in the world. Right. So we went to see the Delvon Lamar organ trio. If you get a chance to see them, do it. Wow, they were so good. So good. So it's it's a trio and it has um, an organ. An organ obviously. And it's like and it's an organ, it's a Hammond organ with the with a rotating the rotator thing. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it's basically a wooden box that's separate from the organ that rotates and um and produces really beautiful sound and then there's also an incredible guitar player jimmy james and uh, a really great drummer too so it's the three of them and oh my god listen to them if you have a chance just listen to them on spotify if you or go and see them live because live they were just so the, yeah, the the way that they were introduced is it's feel good music. It is, but it's kind of like a combination of sort of soul, jazz, funk. funk. Yeah, it was, really, it, really it was righteous. We highly recommend it. Yeah. Four four thumbs up and two paws. <laughs> All right, so this is sort of there. That's kind of it. Highlight, probably too much highlight, but uh, yeah, you could go in and write each letter of each key. I can't be bothered, but um, and then if I want to, I could also go in and do a bit of, you know, just a bit of cross hatching here and there, add in a bit of texture. And I mean, you're not going to cross hatch with a pencil, are you? Oh, okay, there you I'm go. Not using a pencil. I'm using. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah. My feed is behind oh, you. Okay. So, yeah, that's roughly the idea. So, yeah. You're going to do a second The unit? Leslie Rotary Speaker. That's right. Jen Cahill. Jen, do you own one of those? Maybe you do. It's an ex ex textural accent in your, in your home. Because, I mean, the keyboard itself was like a wooden... It didn't even look like a piano. It looked like a piece of furniture. <laughs> like right? a bookcase. Yeah, it was like carved legs and stuff. Gorgeous. Oh, good. Here, the, speaking of melodious sounds, here's the first leaf blower showing up. One of these days, we're going to buy this house. And when we do, we will discuss in no uncertain terms with the, our lawn guys about this whole leaf blowing thing. Right, I think I feel happy with that. There we go. Yeah, it's cute. Um, Chris mentions the Corona. Yes, I think one of the things I showed, one of the pieces. Wait, so a Smith Corona? So did Smith and Corona get a divorce, or is Corona different than Smith Corona? Smith Corona. That's what you know. just drew. It's a Smith Corona. I know. I'm not sure what the relationship is between Corona and Smith Corona. I guess you use a Corona if you want to write things that go viral. Oh, <gasps> zing! Exactly. Na 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 na. <laughs> All right. So there we have it. You gonna do another unit? I'm not. What? No, I feel good about this. 
I feel bad about its placement on the page. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was asking, are you going to do another? Because it feels... Well, I could write something. I could yeah. type something around it. Oh, you know? is there a way you could actually... I could type something. I mean, how would you do that? I would use... I would use one of those thinking uh, machines. What are they called? A laptop. <laughs> and I would set... I you were going to say a and set it in, There's so many typefaces now that look like old typewriters. And I could just type something out and I could maybe cut thin stripes so it almost looked like a telegram. And I could paste it on there. Or I could very carefully letter it. Or I could say to hell with it and just write whatever I wanted. Should we do another one? You could send it to me as a postcard and then I'd throw it away. Should we do another one? Yeah, I think you should. You've got, uh, you know, a few additional models already queued up and they're cute as heck. All right, I'm trying to think, think which one we should do. All right, let's, should we try the this one? I mean, that's very similar to the other one. Too similar? All right. How about a super modern one? Not as much fun to draw, though. How about a super modern one like the Olivetti Lettera? Are we feeling this? I'm still seeing Smith Corona. Oh, oh yeah. You like that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, here it is, the Olivetti Lettera. Let Lettera. Lettera. <laughs> Okay. But I want to approach it differently. I have to, I have to be. And I want to maybe use colored pencils because that is a nice aspect of using this gray book. Um, so I think I'll just, I'm just going to do it small and fast. Love it. A bit of pencil sharpening. Small, maybe small, maybe a little sketchy. Yeah, so this is related to the Olivetti lexicon that I mentioned that I had in college it is that same kind of Milan aesthetic. It, is sort of yeah, it definitely hallmark. looks like you should be sipping a, as you like would a, say, cappuccino in, while you're in espresso. using this. <laughs> no, you would never, an Italian would never be. You know, your cappuccinos are just for breakfast. It's very gauche, I think, to drink a cappuccino except breakfast. At least that's what I seem to remember from Italy, my Italy days. But then you've never been to Italy, have you? Isn't that sad? It's hard to believe. I know. What a deprived childhood. I, I'm surprised you married me despite this well, defect. I hope to rectify Obviously. that situation, but I haven't so far. Yeah. Even when Jack did a whole semester in Rome and I just didn't manage to go. I think you went three times. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I want to come to Italy. Yeah, this, man, this pencil is beautiful on this paper. It just feels so nice. I don't know that watercolor pencil would really work. This is not great wet medium paper, but it is, uh, it's very nice. It's just, it's just smooth when you're drawing with a, with a colored pencil. It just feels really good. And then I think uh, sort of a micron The thing about drawing something like this is you can use it as just an inspiration. Then you can 
you can go off and do whatever you want to in terms of the, the actual shape. Like you can just take these all these complex elements and you could draw certain individual ones. You could leave other ones out entirely if you wanted to. You could uh, just kind of see like what kinds of liberties can you take with the shapes of a typewriter and still have it clearly seem like a typewriter. But maybe it's your own invention. I mean, I think the more you add on a page, the more improvisational you can get because it's like clearly a fleet of typewriters, not right, have to make getting, any one too precious. So you're not bogged down by the details, right? Yeah. I think it would be cool, though, if somebody does one and they post a super highly detailed one. I'd like to see that. Yeah, like a nearly photographic one. And then I'd like to see... <laughs> can you imagine what Franz Van Stone would do with a... Typewriter. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can. But also, like, what would it be like if you um, just did the most abstracted one? Like, could you do it with a single sweeping brush stroke? You know, what would that be like? Blind contour? Maybe, or maybe just a gestural thing. I mean, how would you do a blind contour with all of those buttons? Just let your eye wander around until it kind of went nuts. <laughs> until you had a seizure? Um, this is, something, um, speaking of candy, you hid that big bag of candy. Is it in here somewhere? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I kind of forgot about it until now. I think you should continue forgetting about it. You don't need candy. It's the devil's plaything. Speaking as a former dentist. Today is also National Porridge Day. Porridge. Yeah. Porridge. Please, sir, may I have some more? We could have we could have drawn porridge. Uh, can you think of a worse <laughs> thing to draw? <laughs> Porridge. You could have drawn peas porridge hot. You could have drawn peas porridge cold. You could have drawn peas porridge in the pot nine days old. You could have done at least three drawings. All right. I'm not particularly impressed with myself and this drawing. I, I it, like it. it feels, I think it's zesty. It I think fills, it's fun. It fills the page. So, yeah. There we have it. Um, but it also reminds me, like, I could have used some nice color in the Smith Corona. Like, why did I just leave it gray? Well, because it's beige, IRL. Was it gray? Beige? It's kind of greenish, wasn't it? No, it was, it was... Yeah, it was. It was brownish, beige. Kind of like yeah. beige plastic that was sort of ubiquitous and like... It's kind of a Toontown look to it, though. I kind of liked it. So, anyway... All right, now I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Now, we're done. now the leaf blowers are really about to, yeah, we're about to insinuate themselves. Anyway, that was fun. It's foxy. Yeah, we love the word foxy. I think that's actually a patty word. Foxy. Foxy. It's a great word because it conveys a lot of context without using multiple words. Yeah, I guess. Oh, oh my gosh, P you've misled people into believing you're a dentist. I've, I've, uh, I've been to the dentist. Not a I dentist. Know, I know what they do. Not a dentist. I can be as boring as a dentist. Dentists are not boring. Dentists are heroes. I mean, in the sense that they bore. Oh, zing. Ding, ding. All right, guys, this has been fun, but we're done. <laughs> We're not really done because I wanted to. Here he is. Right there. So I wanted to remind you. Mere inches. We wanted to remind you about. From the microphone. Getting your gray book. You can do it by going to send us an email at info at sketchbooks.com. Including your mailing address. Don't send it to us without your mailing address. And make sure that mailing address is here in the United States. Um, if you'd like to sign up for dannysessays.com. Please do. That's my weekly essay. I actually write two essays a week. 
And actually, next week's Tuesday essay, I'm going to provide a link to an artist who makes amazing things, particularly birds, out of old manual typewriter parts, dismantles these old typewriter parts, and re and turns all of these pieces into incredible sculptures of birds. Anyway, so that's one of the things I do on my Tuesday newsletter is I include a few links, three links to things that I found interesting, and that's one of them, and I'll be sharing that. But on Fridays, I just write various... What do you, how would you describe my essays? Well, I would describe them as essays I, that I, I've written. I would describe them as free. That's the best thing that we could say. <laughs> no, about but I'm that. just saying, like, what yes, risk is there? They're free what and risk? well worth the price. I, I mean, I love them. No, they are free. And if you sign up now, you also get an ebook, which is a collection of some of them, too. Um, so, yeah, if you like them, get them. But if you prefer naked, I can't, HD, I mean, I cannot believe. Prefer, how many heard? times I have blocked this garbage? I mean, right, so come the gar on, YouTube. The garbage, the garbage man is back. Maybe they're, I don't know, maybe we should have drawn nudes. Maybe we'll do that next I'm going to report it as child abuse. Maybe that'll get... Oh, um, God. Anyway, um, and also I'd love to see your typewriter. So please share it on uh, social media. And if you do, on Facebook or on Instagram, just put hashtag SBS draw with me. Some people have been very confused by this idea. If you have a Facebook account, in other words, if you're a living, breathing human being, I'm sure you've posted a picture on Facebook at some point. So just take your camera, phone, take a picture, and share it on Facebook. Now, you might be the kind of person like me who can't stand Facebook and rarely goes there. And you can do it on Instagram, do the same thing. And if, like me, you're also not that interested in Instagram, you can go to the schoolyard, which is our replacement, a much better replacement for both of those things. Or yeah. or just send us an email. Yeah, I guess you could send us an email. I mean, a lot of it's, people do. It, yeah, it's if you can. It's not the most elegant. It gives Would me. You, it's a little extra work for the old JJ here. It but is a bit work. I don't. I don't mind. So you could send it to info at sketchbookschool.com if you want to. That'd be cool too. And but but next week we'll look at all the typewriters in a row. Clickety clackety clickety clack, and we will we will uh, see what they all look like, and I'm sure it will be very nice. Um, thanks for joining me and do subscribe, just subscribe, click the button, subscribe, like all those kinds of things. I'm not sure what they do, but they do something. Uh, yeah, I mean, but here's what I will say about subscription. We're about to hit 125,000 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. We are just a few short. So you could be the 125,000, 125,000 subscriber. And if you are, you're going to get a treat. Super amazing treat. And that treat is that next time I do draw with me, I will notify you about it in person. I will send you, or, or YouTube will send you an email saying there's another draw with me coming up. That's going to be your, your incentive for doing it. It's pretty cool. If you're watching this video on a typewriter, <laughs> you're amazing. I love you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you. See you again next week. Next we week. we do this one more time. And then the week after in which we do it yet again. We do it every week. Every, every week, every Except Thursday. Except for when we have COVID. We're now COVID free. We're super beefed up. We're all good. See you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone.